Continuing with Chapter 3 in the OpenStax College Physics textbook, considering the analytic addition of vectors. So we've done graphical addition in a previous video. Now we want to do the mathematical, more correct, or gives a better result, uh, form of addition of vectors. And for that, we'll need just a quick review over the trig functions, right triangles. Um, so hopefully you are somewhat familiar that there are sine, cosine, and tangent functions of some angle theta. In this diagram, vertex A has the angle theta. And a little unconventional, but we have side A, one of the short side, side C, the other short side of the triangle, and side B. Um, so sine theta is, uh, can be calculated if we know the value of the opposite side, the length of it, and we know the value of the hypotenuse, we would divide those two, that would give us the value of sine of theta. Uh, cosine of theta, the adjacent side to the angle uh, divided by the hypotenuse. Again, this opposite means opposite to this angle. Adjacent, adjacent to the angle. And the tangent function, opposite side divided by adjacent side. Now you should do a little quick check of your calculator here. And let's suppose that you have uh, a value of A of 12 meters and a value of C of 14 meters. So you have A and C. First, is uh, that enough information to, uh, let's say, calculate the tangent? If you know A and C, A is the opposite side, and C is the uh, adjacent side. Sure, you can divide those two. And I came up with 0.857 and some other digits. So that's the value of tangent theta. How would we now calculate the value of theta? We know tangent theta is equal to some number. Well, we need to apply inverse tangent to both sides of that equation. Tangent theta equals 0.857. Take inverse tangent of both sides. Inverse tangent and tangent cancel on the left side. We just have theta remaining. That theta equals inverse tangent of the 0.857. And I came up with 40.6 degrees, 40.6 degrees. So check and see if your calculator gives that result. <coughs> Excuse me. Another quick check you could do of your calculator would uh, come from, back up to here, uh, compute the sine of 30 degrees. Compute the sine of 30 degrees. Just uh, however your calculator does it. And for some calculators, you type in 30 and then activate the sine function. For other calculators, you activate the sine function, then type in 30 and push equals, or get some results some other way. Uh, but you should get 0.5 if your calculator is in degree mode. And uh, most often with the trig uh, work, we'll stay in degree mode. So there's our definitions. Uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. In this diagram, the person who made this diagram let B uh, be assigned to the hypotenuse side of the right triangle. So let's just go a little further here. So here's the suggestion. Let's take the vector A plus the vector Y and see what result we come up with. This is a little bit dangerous to, uh, to write this out. You're okay as long as you recognize that the A sub X given here and the A sub Y are vectors and you have to do vector addition to find this uh, capital A, and that's what we're going to be doing today in this video, uh, learning how to add the vectors. You cannot just add, say, 5 down here and 7 up here and get 12. That's illegal. You can never add two vector numbers that are not parallel. Um, so just a word of warning. Uh, but uh, there is a way of adding uh, components of vectors. This a sub x would be the component x component of a uh, found by taking a multiplying by cosine of theta. Notice if you rearrange here, if you divide both uh, but divide both sides by a, you'd have a sub x, the adjacent side, divided by a, the hypotenuse. That's the cosine function. So that uh, sort of definition for cosine is just being rearranged here. This adjacent side has a length of hypotenuse multiplied by cosine of theta. Um, so let's go a little further here. So let's suppose a particular example here. We have A being 6 meters. I just picked a number. 
So A is 6 meters, and let's suppose the theta is 38 degrees. Use your calculator and find the value of A sub x. We're finding the x component, and in the future we'll call this the horizontal component, of, uh, of A. So we're given the magnitude of the vector here is 6 meters of our A. So we'll put a 6 in here, and we know what the angle is, 38 degrees, so we'll put a 38 in here. And again, your calculator may have different ways of conveniently doing this. On, on mine, I can go ahead and type in the 6, push multiply, activate my cosine key. Whoops, that's, I'm using a different calculator. I'm going to push in 38, activate my cosine key. That takes the, the cosine function of 38 degrees and times 6. And I get 4.73, 4.73 as I round that off. Then calculate a sub y. I won't coach you so much through this one. It won't coach you badly. Uh, but go ahead and uh, you've got the magnitude of 6 meters. The angle is 38 degrees. And in just a few seconds, I'll tell you what I came up with for the calculation. And hopefully you did this calculation also. I got 3.69. So that's how we calculate components of a vector. Now, we need the easiest way is to be given the length of the vector. That becomes the hypotenuse. The original vector is always the hypotenuse. The original vector is always the hypotenuse. The original vector is always the hypotenuse. So we have a component. A sub x is A cosine theta. And the component in the vertical direction, the y direction, will be a and sine of theta. So here's our uh, our city uh, illustration we've seen before. Uh, somebody tells you that the, uh, it, the displacement is 10.3 blocks and that displacement has an angle of 29.1 degrees to the x-axis and that person asks you how many blocks east, how many blocks north. So go ahead and see if you can confirm this. All the numbers are given, so again, I'm going to put in 29.1, activate my cosine key, and then multiply by 10.3. And you have to round just a little bit on my calculator, but it is 9. And then 29.1, let's do the Y component. Activate my sine key times 10.3. And rounding 5.01, but uh, 5 is close enough. Um, so... Those would be the components of this displacement. The components are found using the sine and cosine functions appropriately. The horizontal here, the way this angle has been given, the horizontal is found with the cosine function. Perhaps it's a little bit better to say that the adjacent side to the angle, and not say horizontal, but the adjacent side to the angle is found with the cosine function. And the component that's opposite to the angle I use the sine function to do that uh, computation. When we want to reconstruct a vector, if we know the components, and sort of the theme in this chapter, we're going to have two vectors to add up. We'll find their components. We'll add, say, ax plus bx. We'll add the two x components together. We never add ax and ay or ax and by, the y component of b. We only add x components together. So I'd add ax and bx, I get a number here. I add ay and by, I get a vertical number. And we would compute the angle by taking inverse tangent of those two components. Um, just something for you to consider. Um, will this always give you the right answer for the angle? The answer is no. And you need to know a little bit about the inverse tangent function and what possible angles it produces. You might just try doing a numerical experiment. Put in various plus and minus values for uh, ay and ax and see what uh, range of numbers are produced for theta. Do a little numerical experiment. And if you're a student in my class, we'll explain this. But uh, for right now, we'll just say this is the way we calculate theta. And... Uh, we have a, a, a y and ax. We can use Pythagorean theorem that the hypotenuse squared 
equals the two the squares of the two short sides added together. So a squared equals ay squared plus ax squared. Uh, solving for a, we need to take a square root of both sides, and we get the length of a. So that's reconstructing a vector from the components. That'll be a, a job that we do. A so graphical addition here of a and b. We've used the head to the text has used the head to tail method to uh, start drawing b where a left off. Here's our resultant vector. How would we do this analytically? The graphical method, we can't make perfect sketches, so that's going to be approximate. How would we do it analytically? Well, perhaps you've guessed that we're going to find the component of A in the x direction. We're going to find the component of B in the x direction. These two will add up, and this will be the component of R in the x direction. A sub x plus B sub x would equal R sub x. R is the resultant vector. And then in the y direction, a sub y plus b sub y will equal r sub y. So we'll get those uh, components. We'll do the work separately in the x direction and the y direction. So we have two problems to work out. Two x components to find, add them up, and that'll be the r sub x. Two y components to find, add them up, that'll be the r sub y. Um, so r sub x is a sub x plus b sub x, r sub y is a sub y plus b sub y. So here's a particular example. So a has a length of 53 meters, 20 degrees away from the x-axis. b is 34 meters at 63 degrees away from the x-axis. Imagine a line here that's parallel to the x-axis. And to add them up, the best way is the mathematical way rather than head to tail. So we have to find their components. So you ought to use your calculator and see if you can confirm that the x component of uh, A is 49.2 meters. How would you do that? Well, the x component of A is equal to 53 meters times cosine of 20 degrees. We want the length of this side that's adjacent to the angle, so we use cosine. And then the y component of A that's going to be 53 meters times the sine of 20 degrees. We want the side that's opposite. Um, so those are the A numbers, and you ought to check the B numbers as well. 34 meters times cosine of 63 degrees should produce 15.4. And 34 meters times the sine of 60 degree, 63 degrees should produce 30.3. After you would get these, 65.2 and 30.3, how would you find the angle of the resultant vector? Well, the y component is the opposite side. We have got it all the way from here up to r. That would be the opposite side. And the two sides added together produce 48.4. a sub y and b sub y produce 48.4. In the horizontal direction, 49.2 plus 15.4, that gives us 65. Well, let's do a little checking here. Um, so I'm going to calculate these components. And do you think 49.2 plus 15.4 15 is equal to 65.2? Nobody's complained about this in past years, but... Uh, I don't think so. So 53, and then I need cosine of 20 degrees. So 49.8. There's a misprint here on the slide. This is 49.8. 49.8. And just for fun, I'll check the B sub x. 15.4. Is, is correct. Rounded off. <clears throat> So the number they have here is right, but this labeling a sub x is incorrect. It should be 49.8. Okay, 65.2 is the x, and 48.4 is the, uh, the y number. To find the angle, we have to do uh, through the tangent function. So 48.4 divided by 65.2 on opposite divided by adjacent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 48.4 divided by 65.2 and taking inverse tangent now 
I come up to the 36.6 degrees in agreement here. How would we find the length of R? We know the short sides of the right triangle, 65.2 and 48.4. We have to square each of those numbers and add them up. I'm coming up at 65, 93.6. Now I need to take a square root. And I get 81.2. So we're in agreement there. We've reconstructed vector R. Given that we knew the two sides, 65.2 and 48.4, and notice we did not need to be given the angle. We found it through inverse tangent. We find the length of the resultant vector using Pythagorean theorem. Um, if we're going to subtract two vectors, it's not complicated. Again, we would find their components using sines and cosines, and then we would look at our diagram, and when we add uh, the b sub x and the a sub x together, we notice that it's giving us a shorter result than a sub x for r sub x. So that clues you in that you have to do a subtraction. The vector b here is going to the left on the, in terms of the x-axis, so it's going to be a negative number for its component. A similar thing happens in the y direction. This vector b is uh, angled downward, so its y component um, is going to subtract from the y component of a. So a sub y goes upward, but b sub y takes us back down, and we get a, a, a negative result. <clears throat> so those are the uh, principles of doing analytic vector addition. Uh, we have a uh, situation where we have to find components using sines and cosines. We have to add the x components together or subtract if we're doing a, a subtraction problem. Uh, notice minus b here. b itself was from the previous slide was uh, progressing upward to the right, but minus b is downward. So we're doing this uh, vector subtraction um, a minus b. We can do so by just reversing the signs. If I come back to the numbers here, here's b, and b sub x is 15.4. The x component of minus b is just minus 15.4. The y component of b was 30.3. Uh, the y component of minus b is minus 30.3. So we'd have this b vector pointed down like this, the same length, 34 meters, and just 180 degrees different angle, and we would get negatives for both the x and the y component. If you're used to quadrants, we're in the third quadrant with this uh, angle here. So that's vector addition. It's not difficult, and uh, stay tuned for projectile motion.